All right, everybody, welcome back. We're uh, still plugging away on this Shadow build, uh, the 750 low rider bike. We did get all of our paint done this week, so that's pretty exciting. Um, gonna try and get all this wiring buttoned up, and then we'll be able to start installing the body. So, hope you guys are still enjoying it and uh, enjoying following along. Thanks a lot. start getting the battery cables hooked up so that we have our our main juice I like to use this automotive um, stereo amp wiring to make my battery cables it's really super fine and so it, uh, a little 8 gauge wire conducts really well something else I learned over the years is I used to always solder these crimp ring connectors over the years on bikes that vibrate a lot, I've learned if you do that, the solder joint makes the wire right at the edge of the ring connector pretty brittle. So I've stopped soldering them and I just um, crimp them and our marine grade heat shrink, which seals them up and great connections and less chance of that brittle wire cracking from vibrations on the road. factory ECU um, still got the factory plug we just snipped it off and we will use this plug to rewire back into it so I'm gonna go ahead and just lay this on top of the battery box I'll end up probably just sticking it on there with some 3m tape um, it had a tray originally but the tray was gone and I don't think I have one so we'll just utilize that take our factory wiring diagram we trace everything and we make our little cheat sheet so we know which wires on the plug we need for what you know so we got our coils our pulse generator and then our power our switch power and our ground for our ignition box ignition module whatever so I guess we need to get our coils mounted up Give them a quick cleaning. These bikes run four plugs, even though it's a two cylinder, it's two plugs per cylinder. So it runs two dual output coils. I believe, yeah, one's already, the rear cylinder's already mounted on the other side of the bike. And this one mounts up here to the frame for the front cylinder. Hold that on. 
take these plug wires off for now. Maybe. Maybe I'll just cut them off. I'm going to replace that with some cloth plug wire just for a better look. Okay. Front coil, blue wire, and a black and white switch power will make that red because all our switch power on this bike is red. Got these insulated push on connectors again being number one these are insulated you couldn't really solder them and number two that same deal where they'll get brittle so we're just going to crimp them and being where these are located up underneath where the gas tank goes i'm not even going to shrink wrap them you could slide a piece over and do that if you wanted wouldn't hurt that's for sure but not not necessary so the coils don't really have any poles, so you can hook them up either way and you're fine. And let's see. This will come over here to this box and we'll get that in some loom. shrink on our loom tuck it in here run it along right with the rest of our other our other harnesses once we're all done with everything we'll come back and zip tie everything get it into place where we want and got a little long on this piece of loom so like I said before you can just kind of melt it off it's cool it slides right off and then you can put another piece of heat shrink on that end just to clean it up cut it very good This red will end up going to our switched power, and this blue is going to go to our ignition box. So, snip that off, get that ready, and I'll just go ahead and twist them together. We'll come back and solder them when we get all the wires run up here, and we'll make all our solder joints and shrink wrap at once. And this and this, just kind of tie them together. This is our battery power, so it's going to come to the starter solenoid, also with our starter wire and stuff, but we're going to get back to this tomorrow.
and also get this radiator mounted up so we can get our front crash bars and start getting our foot pegs actually their floorboards our floorboard mounts installed because um, we need to tie in the brake light switch wiring there um, and then we'll run that together with the crank trigger so that'll be our last little bit of wiring running from up front that we need to get back into here so we're gonna take a break from the wiring get this thing cleaned up painted and uh, then we'll be able to start installing installing some more parts on the front here all right we're gonna get this crash bar installed while that radiator is drying this is actually a crash bar for a Evo Softail and we just made up some mounts little center top mount welded it to the frame and a couple tabs down the bottom here and it fit, fit real nice so it wasn't too hard of a modification uh, if you can weld something pretty simple anybody could do solid mount crash bar we have some rears too that we'll do once we get the fender struts and the fender installed we got a little bit more cleaning and painting of parts to do something I do is I don't paint the parts until I'm ready to install them on the bike just keeps them from getting nicked and scratched and whatever um, when they're sitting around the shop probably if you're building one bike at home in your garage just paint all your parts get yourself ready to go but we have storage space space issues and all that kind of stuff so for us it makes sense to paint as we go this is our floorboard mount and all of our shifter mechanisms so we'll go ahead and get these cleaned up and painted and um, we'll come back and continue doing some assembly on this thing <laughs> terminate some of our wiring here so we got our battery power which we're going to tie into the starter solenoid has a battery output on it so we're going to go ahead and tie into that it's also got a fuse in it in case anybody was wondering why I didn't put a main fuse it's because the solenoid has a fuse built in so we don't have to add an additional inline main fuse starter button wire 
That will trigger our solenoid. If we weren't sure, we've got our label we put on before, so we know. side of the battery. I'm going to go ahead and cut those off now. We'll tie them all together into a single ring connector. together and then we'll do one long leg out of there which will run to the tail light once the fender gets mounted. These are crank trigger wires, or pulse generator, whatever you want to call it. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get them soldered up. And then we can put them in our, our uh, loom and route them back to our ignition box.
routed nice, we'll get that tied. Again, once we get everything done, I go back and kind of just zip tie everything in. Um, this is our voltage regulator plug, which I saved from the stock harness. So the three yellows will run over to the stator where it comes out of the motor and then you have a red and a green. Green to ground, red to battery power. It's a simple permanent magnet charging system. So there's no uh, field coil or anything like that that you have to get set up. Like some other bikes are a little, a little bit more complicated to wire the charging system. These are real simple, straightforward charging systems. wires tinned. Um, that's something I think I haven't discussed actually. I don't know how many people know this or don't know it, but whenever you're soldering, I find it easiest to pre-tin all the wires. So you basically flow some solder into each wire. That's for two reasons. One, if you're working by yourself, you would really need three hands. Okay, so back to what I was saying about tinning the wire. You get the wire preloaded with some solder because when you're working by yourself, if you don't do that, you need three hands. One to hold the roll of solder, one to hold the wire, and one to hold the soldering iron. So for obvious reasons, that isn't going to work. So what we do by tinning it is then the solder is already loaded on the wires for us and we can just hold the wire and the soldering iron and attach the wires. Put this iron heat back up. We'll get these three stator leads hooked up. source but I find you get the best charging going direct.
have these. Tuck up here and back up to the battery area. And then the last bit of wires on this side of the bike is going to be two wires, which will be for the brake light switch, um, which will hook in uh, to a banjo bolt brake light switch, which mounts in the master cylinder. So, grab some wire. So, one of these is going to run back to the key tower, and the other one's going to run all the way back to the tail light. So, I'm going to stagger them two different lengths. to the split. This sits this way, right, when it goes in there. Oh, that goes across. Oh, okay. You really can't see it at all. Okay, no, because <laughs> yeah. only when they did the bends. Oh, it's all chewed from the yeah. die? Yeah. There's only so much you can do okay. with it. That's such a tight bend. Actually, that's not even a bend. That's a donut that they stamped in two halves and then mm -hmm. weld it together to make a, a seam like that, to so have that tight of a radius. Where does the one come out on this side? They, one comes out here. Yeah. And oh, and then that one comes, over. comes over and goes out, so it's true duels. Oh, so that one's actually, I never realized that one's shorter. Yeah, yeah, the one's super long. Yeah. That's you know, right. another extra probably realize. foot or whatever, yeah. That was Tony coming in, talking about the exhaust he's been polishing. Tony does all our paint work here, so um, both those beautiful paint jobs, the metal flake with all the panel work and all that stuff Tony did. So this I'm just going to loom up to the split and then um, we'll just lay it in here because I don't know exactly where the master cylinder and all that's going to lay as of yet. I mean, I know where it mounts, but I don't have it mounted, so until we have it mounted, then we'll cut this end off more finalized and tie it in to the switch. But until then, we'll just lay this with the crank trigger wire, basically. So that's that. That's about as far as we can go today. Um, we're going to get the rest of the parts painted up so we can get the foot controls mounted. And then we'll be able to tie in the rest of these wires. Um, follow up on previous, I did end up plasma cutting a brake stay. Just simple, flat, you know, with some slots in it. I still got to bolt it up, but just looks a little bit better than the stock one and uh, makes for a cleaner looking conversion so we'll go ahead and get that bolted up too and uh, continue on with this build so I hope everybody enjoyed watching along I hope maybe maybe you're learning a thing or two and uh, we hope to see you again at Gaddy's Garage